Hello everyone. This is me, Rohit Gautam from Curiosities Chronicles podcast. I'm here with a new guest today. His name is Amit Sharma and he is an optometrist and director at Hacking Group in the UK. He's going to share his journey from being a manager to a leader and how it enhanced his learning and his approach to being a director and manage people or lead people i should say before we move i want to thank abhyudaya global coach circle who is our sponsor they provide coaching training for level 1 level 2 and level 3 from icf so if you are looking to get trained or to learn coaching skills or actually for self transformation please contact them and then look at their website for the upcoming programs on abhyudaya coach I will be putting their website on the description so please do check out so let's go to our episode hello amit how are you green rohit i'm fine thank you yourself good. now good 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 to have you here yeah i'm really excited yeah. Uh, yeah. i watched your um, podcast and i was um, very privileged to be asked to come and join you so oh. i'm looking forward to a nice conversation with you and hopefully sharing some insights which can um, help you provide some lessons to your followers. Oh, thank you very much. It's the first time we're doing it in person as well. So we haven't set up the studio yet properly, but this is our first uh, uh, interaction face to face, which mm-hmm. is great for this podcast. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your time. So obviously we're starting now. You're the first time you're coming in as a guest. Would you like to introduce yourself to the our listener? Yeah, sure. So my name's Amit. Uh, I'm an optometrist and a director with um six practices uh, across the Hakeem group. Hikin group is a group of um it's a group that um looks after independent opticians so it's a like a joint venture partnership. Well, thank you. So we're talking about your journey here from a manager to a leader mm-hmm. and then all that attributes you have learned into more into going from management to a leader. So can you describe to our listeners what made you change from being a manager to a leader <clears throat> it's a very good question i think you only know what you know so mm-hmm. when i was a, a business owner with uh, a previous organization uh, who i was with for 12 13 years 13 years um kind of the way and the culture i was exposed to was a more unreflection and management style and i thought that that's what i knew so that's what i thought was the best kind of thing uh, and then soon when i joined the king group um uh, i was blown away by the the infinite mindset thinking mm. and also the the leadership thinking and the coaching thinking um that was there and straight away um i mean your previous guest they talked about she talked about uh, neha talked about um imposter syndrome yes yeah and straight to our thinking mm-hmm. oh my god <laughs> you know i came in here and had a little bit of arrogance yeah. like, you know yeah. i've had three practices before you know um you know i'm sure i'll be able to handle myself but so within the space of that first session i had um I, i went from here <laughs> thinking i was kind of like one of the top dogs to thinking i'm i'm having to all of a sudden restart mm-hmm. my journey mm-hmm. so it was very humbling mm-hmm. um I've always tried to be humble but again you know I suppose uh it's easy sometimes to get carried away with kind of what you think your skill sets are so but as I said you know very gracefully and very humbly within that kind of literally half an hour for I scratch my head I think oh my god I've been doing <laughs> everything so wrong <laughs> um but you know it's 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 a journey and it's, it's yeah. yeah it's great so so go back to your original question is the reason what what made me change is because the environment because in my so or, or, you know at the day the environment i joined and i'm now part of and i'm really pleased to be part of has really kind of changed my thinking about kind of leadership um uh, about kind of the infinite mindset coaching so lot, lots of kind of things that you yeah, you've talked about so far in your podcast and so yeah that that's kind of what really mm-hmm. kind of forced my forced my hand really yeah yeah and imposter syndrome we were talking with neha as well uh, mm. last episode it, it is it is very common oh. and everyone faces it you know you you go to like certain environments you do feel sometimes you feel mm. imposter syndrome but then again like you said it's your journey to overcome that learn being humble enough to know where you are your current acceptance you know and then you hey i need to change which is again admirable 
you know so so thanks thanks for sharing this just just um, way on that um, i think the, the the key thing with that as well is though um kind of again previously kind of my thought process was that i had to be the smartest person in the room mm, mm. and I think it was Einstein, I think, who said mm-hmm. a quote that if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> you're in the wrong room. Yeah. And, and that's so true. Yes, and, yeah. and I think that when I went from, as I said, the previous environment to mm-hmm. kind of when I joined the Keen group, you know, all of a sudden I wasn't the smartest person in the room. And I suppose that kind of led to more of the mm-hmm. imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Well, I was quite comfortable admitting mm-hmm. kind of that I wasn't. And again, that's another uh, evolution of change that I, I feel quite comfortable mm-hmm. to say that I don't know. Mm. But I know someone who will know, or yeah. Yeah, I'm not supposed to know everything. Um, mm. But you know, that's not my skill set is to be able to kind of see the talent in an individual and be able to play someone a certain role or uh, things like that. I think that that's kind of the skill set of a leader. Yeah, that actually prompted me something. You know, when we go to a team environment, as a coach, team coach or a coach, we just always say that like, I'm not here to show how smart I am. Mm. I'm here to show how smart you are. Yeah. You know, that's what kind of a leadership as well. As a leader, you want to say, okay, how I can bring the smartness in people yeah. rather than I show how smart I am. So that's probably the, the difference between a manager and a leader, I believe. Yeah, well, correct. And I think it's all about empowering. Yes, empowering. You know, it's yeah. about kind of being able to empower. Uh, I think that's true leadership is kind of being able to kind of empower individuals so they become better version of themselves. And that when you leave a role or organization that, you know, that business or that individual you leave them in in a better place than when you joined. I think I think that's kind of a mark of success. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Another thing I want to touch here, Amit, because you mentioned that you went in into an environment, and then you suddenly felt, oh, you know, uh, I'm not the smartest. Or you know, in your previous thinking, so that led me to think that the environment itself would be quite safe space. That it led, it made you grow within that environment rather than being more of a like a intimidating or command and control environment where you could not flourish. So how's the environment in Hakim Group? Like you, it well, came up to me like it was quite safe space to 100%. be in. Yeah. I think that stems from kind of the founder and the CEO Imran, um, who's a very successful entrepreneur. You know, I think he was the first millionaire from Dragon's Den. Mm-hmm. And as a person, he's just very, very inspirational. Uh, and, and I think you can have any conversation with him and you don't feel stupid. Mm. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And that filters down to yeah. kind of the, the culture. Um, and those people who I met initially uh, in my early days in the Hakeem group, I, I like to say that most of them now would say they're in a, a close circle of friends. Mm. And I hope you would consider him as that as well. Mm. I'm very fortunate. Um, I think, as you said, it's just, you, it's a safe space that, you know, they're very keen to help you to evolve. And that eagerness to help you to evolve, even when you do feel stupid, you overcome that because you appreciate that they were probably in the same position yeah. X amount of years ago. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's fine to be like mm-hmm. that because, mm-hmm. you know, not everyone wakes up being, um, you know, an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just like I say, you know, m- m- uh, my son, you know, he-, he loves sports and, you know, with sports, he'll come home and he'll, you know, bat away or with cricket, bat, bat and ball or he'll get his basketball out. But when it comes to his education, you know, if he finds it difficult, he- he'll give up. <laughs> and I said, but, you know, the likes of Coley or Jordan or LeBron James, you know, they don't, they didn't just wake up and all of a sudden become these world-class yeah. athletes. Yeah. You know, how they done it is for practice, practice, practice. Yeah. And you've got to, he's got to, I said to him, you've got to use that same principle with kind of, um, your education and likewise it comes to kind of you know that you don't wake up the point i'm trying to make is you just don't, don't wake up being a, a fantastic exactly. leader exactly. and a fantastic yeah. Yeah. you know entrepreneur and yeah. i'm not saying i'm a fantastic yeah. leader at all at the moment i've got so much more to learn and you know, again when i listen to podcasts like yourself and other podcasts and other reading books and being exposed to people who are uh, of that mindset you know really kind of helps me kind of grow every day yeah, yeah, and it's a journey. It's a journey, hundred yeah. percent. It's 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 and it's a long journey. It never ends. Yeah. Basically, learning never ends. Learning is constant. Yeah, yeah. and as kind of and again, kind of Simon Sinek says, mm. kind of it's that infinite mindset, infinite and that's mindset. really important. Yeah. That you know, just that, yeah. that there's no limit to kind of mm. the growth. And I think if one thinks that they've achieved it or they're the top of the game, I think that's a dangerous position to yeah. be in. Yeah. yeah, personally, I think that's no, no, that that's that's the valid point. That is mm. obviously you've been a manager first and from your experience you worked with the team as a manager and then you worked with the team as a leader what's the difference you feel within the team environment between those two 
Yeah, so I think I touched on it uh, earlier on, kind of when I said that I felt I need to be the smartest in the room. Mm-hmm. So kind of if I look up at my traits as a kind of when I was in manager mode, which at that time I didn't know that, mm-hmm. because on reflection, that's mm-hmm. how I feel. Mm-hmm. I think I'll say I felt that I needed to know every single system and process. Right. So that I felt that no one could pull the wool over their mm-hmm. eyes. I felt, uh, I suppose, that I had to have the kind of the final say mm-hmm. in in every kind of decision. Um, so whether that was kind of, you know, insecurity, because I, I kind of became a, you know, a business owner in a joint venture partnership at the age of 26. So I was still quite young, um, inexperienced. Uh, um, so I think that that sense as well. Um, and I, yeah, I suppose kind of I probably was quite controlling, I think. Um, they're the kind of the, the two biggest things. Although, Many people who I've still talk, you know, very close kind of relationships with, kind of, um, you know, they, they, they do just feel that my style was, you know, very empowering. Mm. But I, I think if I worked with them now, I think they really will feel a difference. <laughs> um, but I think it's probably more my personality that might. So my personality as a person, you know, I try to be positive, kind of happy go lucky, very kind of focused on relationship building because I think ultimately kind of people flourish with people that they like and people buy from people that they like as well it's very kind mm. of simple in my mind very simple kind of rules and not rules sorry kind of uh, concepts really that um that tend to work so um yeah i think that that's what i'll say and so i suppose the, the change is again we've touched on it before is that it's you don't need to know everything i don't have to be the smartest person in the room uh what I do need to know is just know who within my team or externally I can turn to to kind of solve a solution. And it's just to have the confidence that um, that not every idea is going to work. And uh, it's only a mistake if you do it twice. Mm-hmm. That, you know, with every failure, um, there's a learning from that. And again, kind of, I think Michael Jordan said that, you know, many times that, you know, he's learned more from his miss shots then yeah. he's kind of and many people yeah. many yeah. many successful yeah. entrepreneurs yeah. or sports kind of men but there's a quote that really stands out for me when Michael Jordan and he, and he kind of says he's learnt more from his miss shots and his <laughs> kind of lost games than he did from his, his wins yeah. uh, you know and you know, there's yeah. probably not many greater sportsmen yeah. than yeah. him yeah. especially in basketball anyway so yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah I think that that's a um, risk you know to, to be kind of just a bit risk averse um, yeah brave to kind of make take risks courageous yeah Yeah, courageous yeah Yeah. um and and just to kind of step out comfort zone really and i think they're the kind of the the biggest things now you know are these changes that have happened because of kind of as i've grown older so are they just natural evolutionary changes or are they changes because i've changed kind of from um kind of a management mindset to leadership mindset i think it's probably a combination of both Mm -hmm. but i think kind of I, i definitely kind of feel that the leadership role is is you know um well i think it it's makes life more interesting because the thing i find is and i, and I use this how i know is that when i was in management mode so i say as a previous own business owner you know i'll go away on day off or have a holiday mm. and like you know i'll be constantly bombarded <laughs> you know messages you know this you know this issue's happened or can you deal with this patient concern um or, or whatever and you know you, you're gonna dread kind of the first day back at work because you're gonna how many emails you, you're gonna have and it was the day when you know you couldn't get emails mm. easily on kind of your phone and stuff so and and that was probably more the controlling kind of element of me but wanted to be in control of everything and new start business new new role for me so i just wanted to make sure everything was perfect and Things just can't be perfect all the time. There's no such thing as perfection. Yeah, you can yeah. aspire to that, but yeah. you can never ever hit a hundred percent because yeah. there's no such thing. No such thing as I, I, I don't think it is, you know, yeah. because there's always yeah. something that you can do yep. to, do to do it better. And I think yeah. that self reflection is very important in kind of whatever role you're in. That you know you constantly self reflect, and I, and I find that very important. I'll be self reflecting after my conversation mm. with mm. you and mm. probably cringing at some of the things <laughs> I've said. <laughs> but uh, hopefully there'll be yeah. some kind of yeah. good takeaways for mm. kind of your your followers and listeners. Mm. Um yeah. So I think kind of that um relaxation of mm. um, bre- um kind of breaking away from um 
not being in control. I think that's the one biggest thing as well. So like now, I accept that things aren't going to be hundred percent, but at least I can spend time with my family. I can spend time going on holiday and have downtime because kind of the the break is is also important for you to constant you know constantly be able to kind of achieve kind of um, success. I think as well. Mm-hmm. No, good, good. So I was thinking when you when you said that, like, um, there must be a time in the context specific where you have to manage as well. It's not always hundred percent leadership. Uh, you know, sometime you have to kind of manage as well. Is that what you're experiencing as well? Yeah, because there's one cap doesn't fit all. Yeah, and, and adaptability is important. Mm-hmm. So it's just like um, we always try to kind of have a um, relaxed. Um, empowering environment but some individuals just can't respond to that and uh, they prefer to be told what to do uh, and that's where you as a leader have to have to kind of adapt i think and mm. you have to become the manager rather than the leader and not micromanage but just manage them in terms of they just need to be told and mm. you know and and again just anything in life there's, there's never one a cap that fits all you know you have so many personalities that you mm. Um, of within a team and you know that you have to uh, deal with and you have to adapt with and actually talking about personalities um uh, when i joined the hakeem group we um so kind of uh, one of the guys who's leading the workshops uh so it's for kind of new direct- okay. directors and stuff right. so um uh, he, he kind of did this um, personality test it's based oh, okay. on animals yeah yeah okay by someone called nigel Risner. so it's quite right, famous right, right. i think his book's like it's a zoo out there or something like oh that. okay okay so um and then i did that test then uh so this was in november so january 2020 just before covid mm-hmm. four yeah. years okay okay four years ago and then um and i did that test recently so remember that's when i just joined the key group mm-hmm. so i was probably having traits of mm-hmm kind of a manager right so i just did that test again um this year because mm-hmm. i was preparing for uh end of year team meeting okay and this is one of the this one of this the, is one of the kind of the yeah. workshops that workshop. we we're going to yeah. break out sessions so that we were going to do yeah and the animal animal character changed so <laughs> I, ch- I was originally a, an elephant mm-hmm. and that's not because of my ears it's because <laughs> that, that, that was a trait yeah and now when i did the analysis i was i was, I was a lion oh, yeah. now um, I can't remember off the top of my head what they are, but I can. If you've got a minute, I can probably. Tell yeah, please, you what please. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm yeah. not going to talk about the bad bits. No, no, okay? no, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because um, <laughs> this yeah. is all a very positive, very positive. podcast. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, no, no, no. no, but then again, we, we were discussing about failures, right? Yeah. They are not failures; they are the learnings. Yeah, yeah. You know, we always talk about in team coaching as well. Anything you learn more with failures. Yeah, you know, yeah. Innovation happens with failures. Mm. They're more learnings rather than failures. Mm. So we take it as a, like more learning. Yeah. yeah. So the so the elephant characteristics mm-hmm. are cautious, mm-hmm. meticulous, mm-hmm. deliberate, skeptical, and formal. So these mm-hmm. are the kind of the positive okay. kind of characteristics. Okay. And the lion, which is what I feel and some of my peers mm-hmm. feel I'm at now, is single minded, mm-hmm. visionary, mm-hmm. straightforward, purposeful, and persevering. Mm. So for those who are interested, there are two other. Um, okay. Animals, so right. there's a monkey. Mm-hmm. The monkey's playful, energetic, extrovert, lively, and persuasive. Mm-hmm. And there's a dolphin, which is caring, nurturing, supportive, patient, relaxed. And obviously, very rarely are you mm-hmm. kind of yeah, yeah. holy one. Um, one into an But it's just yeah, kind yeah. of whichever yeah. traits you yeah. share the most yeah. of. So they're the positive. So yeah. <laughs> I think some of the yeah. um, lion negative traits yeah. are uh, can come across arrogant, mm-hmm. can come across overpowering. Mm. Uh, and, and I think elephant was stubborn and things yeah. like that. So yeah. Right, so. right. So see, this is what you said. There's a journey. Yeah. Like you said earlier, you're not there yet. You're still learning. Oh, you're so. getting better. Yeah. So obviously, you wanna learn. You wanna assess this. Take accept of this. Okay, I'm still showing kind of these kind of behaviors, mm. and then how I can learn better. How can I be a better leader yeah. than you are today? It's all about today, right? You can only be better than yesterday. Yeah. So, I like that when you said like you you. The negative points are still there, like you said earlier. You mentioned that that you you're taking time, you know, you're learning mm-hmm. every day. You uh, listening to podcasts, you know, reading books, and you know, learning from the job as well. Yeah. You know, you direct, you lead people, so it's all about learnings. 
If, I mean, it's life is a mm. for me. It's hopefully <laughs> not sure. It's, <laughs> it's a marathon, not a sprint. It so is, we it hopefully is, we've got yeah, a, yeah. a few years left in yeah. us to kind of yeah. kind of keep evolving. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. that's really important. I think I, I think as I said before, it's dangerous if you think you've ever reached the yeah, top of the yeah, game because yeah. there's always someone better. Always someone better. Stop. Yeah. Period. And that's it. That's it. This is what we say, isn't it? The always someone better mm. will be your own version mm. because you can look back at you and say, oh, I wasn't that good here, but I'm now better. Mm. So your marathon is with your own self mm. rather than with people running mm. with you, right? So you want to be better than yourself, that version. Right? That's why I think the self-reflection yeah. is very yeah. important. Very, very important. I think yeah. you know, a lot of people, yeah. regardless of kind of what role they're in, I mm. think they kind of need to do that a little bit more, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, and it's not to kind of, it's not just about kind of the wins, uh, mm. sorry, the losses, as in where things, just the mm. wins as well, mm. you know, because even situations where you think you've done well, you know, could you have done something differently? Um, because it probably is, you know, yeah. and, and I think that learn, that constant infinite mindset that, that I kind of keep referring to and just kind of uh, that desire to kind of just be a better version of yourself. You know, it helps and it doesn't only just help kind of professionally, it helps kind of personally, kind of yeah. relationship with, you know, kind of, spouse children yeah. you know and kind of loved ones and stuff so, yeah. yeah yeah oh good good yeah I'm, I'm quite enjoying this conversation on me uh i'm thinking now if you as a leader come in what would you tell when you started as a manager what would you teach back to your version of being a manager what are the key traits you think amit from like four or five years ago need to build uh trust trust your team and just accept the mistakes will happen. But as I said, it'll only, it's only a mistake if it happens twice. Mm. And then if it happens twice, don't blame the individual. Was it my instructions weren't clear enough? Did I explain what I was trying to achieve in clarity? I think that's that's probably another thing that I've evolved as well is just that um, rather than kind of, not that I was a finger pointer, but, you know, it's, when something goes wrong, because it will, because that's yeah, life. Yeah, okay. life yeah, yeah. It's it's not about whose fault it mm. is. At the end of the day, the ball's dropped. Mm. You know, what are we going to do to make it right? Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Rohit's fault, yeah. Amit's fault, yeah. X person's fault. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, we've done this podcast. You know, something's gone wrong in the podcast. So what next time, what are we going to do so it doesn't go wrong? Yeah. And, and, and regardless of whose fault it is, because it's never solely one individual's yes. fault. As I said, it could be my instructions to you your instructions to me so that that's where the learning is you know and i think that's kind of one thing i'll say and i say just and i think i'll say to myself just be patient mm. that you know it's don't compare yourself to other people because you know they're probably older than you more mm. they've had different um exposures in different environments to you so it's not it's never like for like comparison as long as kind of you've got peace of mind, you know, you've got your health and you've got your support of your loved ones, that, they're, that they're the key things to give you the drive to kind of help you achieve whatever you want to achieve, you know, as long as you've kind of got that um, ability to kind of, as I said, just keep learning. But, you know, I hate reading, <laughs> absolutely hate reading. <laughs> so I love podcasts, you know, yeah. because it's, you, you know, listen. most of the time yeah. I, I, I'll have a long journey yeah. and, you know, so it's a good kind of, uh, a good opportunity to kind of just kind of get some inspiration and get some golden nuggets in a, you know, hour or so. Mm. But, you know, there are some books that I've read and, you know, mm. I've read, uh, again, um, Sir Alex Ferguson's book. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was amazing about his kind of, how he evolved yeah. and how he created that winning yeah. culture. I remember you gave me that. It's, it's there. Oh, is it there? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, it's there. You gave me that. It's, it's covered in dust. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've got a lot of books here I need to read. So well, I've got a lot of things. Yeah. You know, they, I, I say to um, yeah. lots of people, I say, yeah. my... Um, Bookshelf is very clever. Yeah, Unfortunately, right. my <laughs> my brain doesn't match that bookshelf. Yeah, but... So that reminds me that I have to learn. Mm. I still have loads to learn. Yeah. That's the only way I can look yeah. at it and say, listen, I've got loads to learn. I, yeah. I buy, so I just, yeah. again, literally want, every month I'll end up buying a book and my yeah. wife, she'll go, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> Another book. <laughs> Another book. <laughs> and like, literally my bookshelf is not yeah. big enough now. So yeah. I've just literally ordered um, a book from... Uh, James Timpson, so he's oh, okay. from the Timpson family, the, oh, okay. the key cutters. The key yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's fourth generation CEO, oh, okay. and so I, I he's one of the few poc uh, one early podcasts I listened to, and I was really kind of inspired by him, mm -hmm. only because one is he's, he's very his his um, characteristics are very similar to Imran's, uh, both from kind of Manchester yeah, area, yeah, kind yeah. of northeast, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, northwest, northwest, kind of. Yeah, northwest yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, um, 
characters. So yeah, so yeah, so um, yeah. Mm, nice. That's just landed. I've got the message from members and let you come through. <laughs> you come through. <laughs> I'll add it onto the bookshelf. Yeah, that's it. No, no, good to hear. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I want to ask. I've got a very curious question here. You know, you work with teams with different. You have different. Uh, uh, stores uh, all over the UK. So how do you manage team relationships? How do you foster those uh, team building um, as a leader? So I've got kind of like a, a template that I've kind of come across again. Mm-hmm. It's kind of called, called Awesome Teams and kind of with that there's kind of a few kind of points really. So I think for everyone there needs to be clarity in terms of kind of common goal. So what's the common goal? Common goal yeah. So the common goal is you know for me to kind of create an environment where uh, it's a positive working environment and then if that's there then naturally the exceptional patient care will happen and therefore naturally I believe the kind of the KPIs will be achieved you know typically um, so people need to know what the goal is yeah you know, okay, your mission statements yeah, okay. yeah there needs to be clarity of roles um, there needs to be clarity of kind of roles and responsibilities so when I recently joined um, when I bought into the recent group of five practices, and there was kind of no, there's no, there were no kind of leaders within each practice. So that was the first thing that we did. We introduced kind of managers or leaders within each practice. So there's ownership for that practice. Yeah. Yeah. So um, ownership in terms of patients, if they had a problem, they knew who they could turn to rather than be passed around like a book. Also, um, if there's an issue, kind of employee issue, then again, there's a figurehead on site that they can talk to. So although, you know, we always say that we're available, for, mm-hmm. but you know, you say that, that it's open door policy, yeah. but how many people actually take take that up? And especially, it's more difficult when you've just come new into business because you have to build that relationship and trust. Mm-hmm. Um, so, roles and response systems and processes mm-hmm. that we make sure that um, kind of we follow set systems. And again, they're not systems that you know I would go in as a bull in a china shop. So you know because. Uh, what works in one environment does not necessarily not necessarily going to work yep. in another environment, and also yep. they might be doing something that works yep. really well. Yep. So the concept is just to kind of observe, have a look at kind of things and and what tweaks can be made, um, what changes can be made, and explain the why. Really, I think that's really important. That I'm, I'm not making changes for the sake of making mm-hmm. changes, but um, you know, these are this is the reason why. I think one thing I, I, I will I've changed even over the last kind of two and a half years is that just understanding that I talked about the sprint to marathon analogy before that but also that it's not how fast you go it's as long as you go in the right direction yeah, like, that's yeah. really important and I yeah. think that's something that I've had to control I just kind of previous kind of charging like an elephant probably that, <laughs> that's where I just wanted to kind of get it all done yeah. you know and I've got to understand that you know how I work is very different to how you work and there's no right or wrong because that's that style has kind of it's right for your personality and the team that you're with or were with and I've got to just be uh, respectful to, to that and that's the constant mm-hmm. learning mm-hmm. Uh, yeah so kind of so kind of common goal definition of roles and responsibilities uh, systems clarity systems and processes uh, yeah I think I think that they're kind of the, mm-hmm. the, the three or three or top three yeah. things I think are quite yeah. important mm-hmm. I think relationship building is really important mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. kind of every time I've gone into business uh, I've always spent time to introduce myself to those who I'm going to be working alongside mm-hmm. um, you know so it could be half an hour an hour could be talk, but just to kind of introduce myself my values so kind of for me my, my kind of what I call non-negotiable behaviors are kind of uh, honesty um, trust that's the foundation of any important relationship uh, humility I think is very important that um, be humble in, in what we do that as I said, we, we discussed earlier that there's always someone who's better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and be great gratefulness and attitude. And attitude is just, you know, talent will get you in the room, but your positive attitude or well, genuine attitude will, is what will keep you in the room. Mm. And having that kind of mindset, that's really important. And I think you know, when I look back at the key relationships I've got in my life, you know, a, three, uh, four of them traits are very common in kind of those key relationships. Mm. So it's, it's not a chance, really. Mm. You know, these are common themes. So, uh, I think that, that. So, I always spend that time just to kind of uh, understand and kind of people I'm working with and kind of build relationships. Obviously, it's, it's more difficult when you've got lots of team members. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know, you know. So, um, but 
to things like you know having uh, so we introduced the kind of annual team day mm-hmm. so we did last year uh, was the first time we did it cause it was after my first full year so we did like um this uh, driving range golf and yeah, we had yeah. sessions Teamly, after that yeah, yeah. this year we did um it was cold but luckily it was sunny so we did um <laughs> crazy golf right and which is outdoors and also um, zip wiring yes yeah, yeah so uh yeah. I wasn't going to do it. I was just going to observe just to make sure everyone was mm-hmm. settled without got dragged in and it was fun. <laughs> it's good. That, that shows actually how the trust is within yeah. the team, how the team building is, right? At yeah, the moment, the relationships good. are... Yeah. Booking in, being yeah. part of the team. Yeah, yeah. You know, part of the there's team. There's no... Yeah. Try to avoid that yeah. hierarchical approach, approach that, you know, yeah. Yeah. If, there's a, if there's rubbish yeah. on the floor, yeah. you know, I'm not going to tell everyone to go pick yeah, it up yeah, and yeah. I walk past yeah. it. You know, I'll pick it up yeah, because, you know, it's it's that mindset of, you know, just, you know, whatever I ask, if I was to ask someone to do something, you know, it will be something that I would do myself mm. you know so mm. it's not none of that mm. hierarchical approach i think mm. that that's really important yeah important yeah uh, actually uh, something came up for me when you were talking about you know when you go into teams you, you understand that other person is different mm. we all wire differently maybe the one the values you have the other person doesn't have that value that came to me that you show empathy towards the other per- person your colleague right so how this, and then you talk about a lot of like team building, you know, understanding the the dynamics, emotion, intelligence, I heard of, you know, I'm paraphrasing. So how this empathy and emotion intelligence are important in effective leadership, in your view? Uh, so emotion and? Emotional intelligence and emotion empathy. Intelligence. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very important because mm. you've got to, it comes back to what you said, is adaptability. Mm. You know, one cap doesn't fit all. Some people prefer to be told what to do. Some people, you know, they want to be empowered or trusted what to do. You're never going to see the true benefit of an individual if you, if you don't kind of give that level of trust. Mm. But also, you know, that empathy is very important because you just don't know what's going on in someone's life, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's always easy to assume that, you know, oh, he's been moody today. Mm. But you just don't know what's happened to them, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because some people, they can, they, they can, they have a game face. Mm. Yeah, and I'm one of them. Mm. You know, as soon as I cross that line, no matter what's happening, personally, you know, I'm in my game face. Mm. You know, I'm in work mode. Some people can't do that. Mm. You know, they, you know, they bring their yeah. emotional baggage, the baggage to. Yeah. And again, is there's not a right or wrong. You know, it's uh, so it's wrong if it starts to affect kind of other people when you're in a kind of a environment where you're kind of delivering customer service and care. Then yeah, you know, it, it can't really affect that individual because again. You don't know what effort that individual has made to come in to see you. Mm. You know, they could have had to get childcare. They could have yeah. had to kind of, it could be the day off, childcare. They could have an elderly mm. relative or parent mm. they need, that need looking after. You know, mm. it could be a big, you know, big effort for them to come into the, to get their eyes tested, you know, that's yeah, my yeah, business or yeah, yeah. buy some glasses. Yeah. So, you know, everyone's got to be, you know, there could be no judgment. You know, mm. you've got to treat everyone the same. Mm. I suppose mm. it comes to that as an empathy and emotional intelligence that, yeah, we're able to just accept that people deal with things differently, but just give people the the respect and the time that you know you just give them the best service. Mm. Amazing. Answered your question. Yeah, no, you did. Yeah, okay. you did. No, no, thank you so very I, much. I have yeah. a habit of just no, no, no that's fine. It's fine. Um, I was I love listening, so I'm really good at listening since <laughs> I, I, love I started coaching as well. So that's, <laughs> so, so that's a good combination. <laughs> I'm, I'm a good listener now. I think I'm a good listener, but I'm getting better. Yeah. So thank you very much, for Amit, for mm. your precious time here today to have a podcast and uh, i hope listeners got a lot of out lot, got a lot out of this mm. uh, today and uh, i'm looking forward to our next episode maybe we can talk about your journey next time yeah sure you know good. where you are today and then maybe two, six months time we can do another episode and see yeah, where you to. are what else did you learn mm. yeah good so before we end today i mean uh, i would like you to say one line a one sentence one learning your best you think that made me better we can share with your with our listeners one just one learning if you have to prioritize your learnings uh oh that's difficult <laughs> what's the biggest thing that's changed me It's difficult. That, that's fine if it's difficult. No, no, no. I'm going to answer it. <laughs> yeah. Because for once I'm quiet. So yeah. this is enjoy, enjoy this period of silence. Yeah. I, th- I think I'll say, I'll probably say infinite mindset. Mm. You know, okay. I, I think just kind of 
um, yeah, just never stop learning. You know, I, I think that's really important mm. because, mm. you know, um, you know, it doesn't have to be kind of just, um, you know, professionally. And I suppose that's going to be even more important going forward as well yeah. because with the kind of artificial intelligence, it's just mm. so easy to say chat GBT. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's the answer to yeah. this question? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's a, you know, dictionaries aren't used anymore. Mm. I see my kids, my children, you know, um, mm. Siri, what's the weather like today? So rather than looking <laughs> yeah, up exactly or looking at the Siri world, or yeah. how's the um, yeah. you know how do you spell X word or yeah. Siri, what does this exactly. word mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know, it's just it's just creating mm. kind of that culture where mm. people aren't really kind of using the. It's mm. too easy to get the answer yes, without yeah. putting any effort in. Yeah. So I think that's what I think. Yeah, you know, having that infinite mind is just to mm. keep learning. I mm. think that's really important because and reflection. Mm. They're the two. I know you said one, no, but they're the, I think they're the two things because yeah. I think reflection is really important. Mm. Um, but not only in, in the negative context yeah. when you failed, but also when, when you've succeeded yeah. as well, because, yeah. you know, would you have done anything different? Yeah. And if not, brilliant. Mm. But if, if there is something different that you could have done, mm. then, you know, again, just take that as a learning and, you know, take it forward, I think. Brilliant, Amit. It's a brilliant end to our podcast this episode today. So thank you very much once again. No, thank you. Thanks for coming. So listeners, thank you for listening to this podcast. We'll come back with the next episode with new guest. Till then, take care, stay safe. And bye for now. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Amit. <laughs>